have several different tutorials on my channel about how to create a time lapse using Final Cut Pro. However, it wasn't until recently that I realized that I have been doing them completely wrong. That is why you fail. Now the information is still very valuable that I originally gave, so I'm going to show you the original method that I would do, and then I'm going to show you the new method that I think is so much better. The original method is I would just go ahead and import all of the photos that I was going to use with command I. Now that I have all these photos in here, I would just select them all with command A, then I would push W to drop them on the timeline. Each of these photos is 10 seconds in length, so we need to select them with command A and then push control D to change the duration. Now if we type in one, that is going to signify one frame, then we can push enter and now everything's been shortened down to a single frame. After that, to fill out the black edges, we can go down to the spatial conform, change it from fit, over to fill. We could also right click and push everything into a compound clip so that now we can just move this with the regular transform tool and everything will be moved accordingly. But there are some major problems with this method. First and foremost is look at the hundreds of photos that are found in my event. This can be very annoying. Now you definitely can create alternate events, but if you ever select your main library, you're still gonna see those hundreds of photos. Additionally, this is actually a pretty big performance hit on Final Cut Pro because it's cycling through hundreds of photos so quickly and usually time-lapse photos could be quite large. So that is what brings me on to this new method for creating time lapses for Final Cut Pro. And the funniest thing is, is it has nothing to do with being inside Final Cut. We are actually going to use QuickTime Player. Now that I'm in the finder, I'm just gonna push command and space to get the spotlight search, and I'm just going to search up QuickTime Player. Now that we're in QuickTime, we can go up to File and select Open Image Sequence. In here, we can see that I have all of the hundreds of photos. There's 299 to be exact. So I will just go ahead and select all of them. Then I will select Choose Media. QuickTime is going to give you this dialog window. You can set the resolution. I'm going to leave it at the actual size of each photo. You can set the frame rate. I like 24 frames per second. And you can encode for H.264, H.265, and you can also do higher quality with ProRes. So this is really important, especially if you're doing like a TIFF image sequence, you need all of the color data, you can do a ProRes video. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and push open and QuickTime is just going to quickly process all of those photos we've brought in. we can play this directly in QuickTime, the performance is going to be much better than if we were playing this in Final Cut Pro. And we can just push Command S to save it and we can call it whatever we like in whatever folder we like. And if we go back into Final Cut Pro, I will just delete all of these clips and we'll push Command I to import it, find our video sequence and select Import Selected. If we drop this on the timeline, we are going to have a full resolution version of all of those photos that we can work with very, very easily in Final Cut Pro. And it makes it much simpler to send this video file over to people or to edit with it in Final Cut Pro. And it's going to increase your performance quite a bit. That is the new way that I would create time lapses for Final Cut Pro. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.